Hey guys, it's Deb. Welcome to part 33 of Let's Play The Sims 4 Get to Work. In our last episode, um, <laughs> Shauna and Jordan spent the day together at the spa, and it looks like they just became best friends. Yes, Shauna Kramer and Jordan Presley are becoming best friends. Um, so they did spend the day at the spa, and Erica Reynolds, she decided to drop by the spa because she heard Shauna talking about meeting Jordan there. And she dropped by just to try to eavesdrop and find out what was going on. Well, so far the girls have not seen her, but she has just made her presence known by walking past the girls. Um, and Jordan and Shauna did have a really good time at the spa. And Jordan has been so very supportive of Shauna. You know, she does not know what Shauna's secret is. She does not know what Erica is holding over Shauna's head. Um, and it looks like Ethan's dad has arrived at the spa as well. I guess he is looking for his wife, Erica. Uh, but Shauna has decided, you know, she's told Jordan, Jordan, let's get out of here. She has decided um, that it's time. Because Jordan has been such a good friend, they are very best friends now. And Jordan has been so supportive of her. She feels that it's time that she tells Jordan her secret. So, she is going to invite Jordan back to the house uh, where she's staying with her parents, her parents' rental property house. She's going to invite Jordan back there um, for some alone time where they cannot be overheard, where Erica cannot hear what they are talking about. And she's going to tell Jordan her dark secret. And let her know exactly um, what Erica's holding over her head. What Erica has on her. You know, the secret that could actually possibly cause Ethan to lose his job. So they are going to come in and they're going to sit here. Uh, well, I thought they were going to. Um, <clears throat> and it looks like Miss Jordan has changed her outfit magically. And um, I noticed when I came back into my game that neither of them were wearing the outfits that they were wearing previously. But, you know, no biggie. <laughs> she's going to go ahead and compliment Jordan's outfit. And she's going to say, wow, did you have that up your butt? You know, where were you hiding that? Was it in your purse? Uh, really, really nice. Okay, so now possibly they might be able to sit here together, and it looks like they might be able to. Uh, I don't know if they really will or not, but we're going to try it. Yeah, because that's the way things go in The Sims 4. <laughs> when you tell your Sims to do something, they might do it, but then again, they might not, just like right now. Is she going to sit? <laughs> okay, so we have got Shauna and Jordan sitting here together. And Shauna's going to go ahead, and she's going to tell Jordan her secret. New beam and so she's telling her, Lamina Jordan, when I was starting my freshman year of college, I was arrested. And Jordan's like, well, Shauna, I know you, and I know that you're a wonderful person. You are not a criminal. So whatever you were arrested for, I know it must have been a mistake. Um... You know, something really minor. Did you write a check and maybe it bounced? Or, you know, what What could you have possibly done? And Shauna's like, Actually, Jordan, I was arrested for shoplifting. And Jordan's like, You were arrested for shoplifting? I, I don't see you as a shoplifter. How could this have happened? Well, here is what happened. When Shauna, after Shauna graduated high school in Sunset Valley, she went off to Twinbrook to go to college at the same college where her mother went to school. And um, she decided that she was going to join a sorority. She was going to join Lama Cha Misa, which is the same sorority that her mother um, belong to. So actually, you know, she was a legacy because her mother was a Lama Cha. 
And, you know, when you are a legacy, it, you do have um, a slight advantage getting, getting into the sorority. However, it is not guaranteed. Just because your mother was in that sorority does not automatically guarantee that you will be in. And, um, you know, Sandra had always talked about her college life and how the sorority was such a very big part of her college life and how she has friends today uh, that were her sorority sisters in college and how much it meant to her. And she was really, really excited for Shauna to get into the sorority. You know, she wanted Shauna to be a Lama Cha too and have the same type of experience that she had had. Well, um, you know, Shauna was all about making friends and, you know, she wanted to fit in at the university. You know, she wanted her university days to be, you know, a really great experience and she got really excited listening to her mother, um, you know, talk about everything that she had, you know, gone through and how wonderful her college days were. So, you know, she was kind of excited, you know, about the possibility um, of joining this sorority, not really because she was uh, caught we'll up in sororities, you know, or anything like that, but because she knew how much it would mean to Sandra for her to carry on, um, you know, this legacy. So she, mainly the reason she wanted to be in the sorority was because she did not want to disappoint her mother. So when she goes off to college, you know, she goes through, she is going through rush week and everything's going really nice and wonderful and she's met a lot of people and all the girls seem really nice. Well, the president of Lama Cha, her name was Jessica. And she seemed to take a very special interest in Shauna and was spending a lot of time with Shauna, which is really unusual for the president of a sorority, you know, to um, take an interest in someone, uh, a freshman who's rushing the sorority. But she did, and she, you know, they were really starting to become good friends. Well, um, at the end of Rush Week, Jessica calls Shauna um, over, and they have coffee. And they have a very private conversation. And Jessica informs Shauna that she wants her to be a part of the sorority, but there's something she wants Shauna to do for her in return. It seems that Jessica had had a summer job at a shop near the campus. Um, it was a jewelry store, but they also sold these um, crystal figurines that were the highest quality crystal in all of Sim Nation. And um, there was a crystal figurine there that cost 500 simoleons. And Shauna's like, okay, are you telling me you want me to buy you this crystal horse figurine? Because I don't have 500 simoleons. And Jessica was like, no, let me tell you what happened. So Jessica proceeds to tell Shauna that the owner of this jewelry store had cheated her out of $500 in overtime pay based on a technicality. And so she had quit. The, the, her job at the jewelry store and she said that the owner of the jewelry store was a crook a terrible terrible man who was always cheating his employees and could not keep employees because of his business practices and how he was always cheating everyone that he ever did business with and so she told Shauna what I want you to do because this jewelry store owes me money they actually owe me 500 simoleons in back pay. She says, now I cannot myself go into the jewelry store, you know, because I used to work there and I'm not allowed there because, uh, you know, I gave the owner a piece of my mind when I left and told him, you know, that I thought he was a crook and all of this stuff. She said, what I'm wanting you to do is I want you to steal the crystal horse figurine because they owe me the money that this figurine is worth. And Shauna's like, well, I don't know. I don't think I can pull this off. I've never stolen anything in my life. You know, how could I possibly do this? And Jessica's like, it will be no problem. I'm going to have one of the other girls go in first, go in before you, and they are going to dis distract the employee who is working at the counter 
And they're going to, um, you know, get her attention. And while her back is turned, you just slip the crystal horse figurine into your bag. And you quietly walk out the door. And no one will ever know. And you will be, um, you know, in the sorority. You know, I will vote you into the sorority. No problem. You know, we will be sisters for life. And, you know, this is a very, very strong bond. And Shauna's thinking about this, you know, and Jessica looks at her and she says, if you refuse to do this, then I'm sorry that you do not have enough support right now as it stands with the other sisters to get into the sorority. You're not going to make it in. But if you do this for me, you know, you will be bonded to all of us. You know, she's, she's like, I'm not going to tell the other sisters what you did for me. But I can guarantee you that you will have a very good place in this house, in this sorority, um, and we will be bonded for life. Well, you know, Shauna had to think about it, and she came home. Well, you know, she was not living at home. She was living in a new town. She was living in Twin Brook at the college. Uh, but, you know, at the moment, you know, she was staying in the dorm until rush week was over, until being voted into the sorority, so she was not living in the sorority house at that time. So, um, you know, she goes back to her room, and she's thinking about it, and she's really, really upset. And she decides to tell Jessica no, and she knows that she will not get into the sorority. So she has made her decision she is not going to do it. Well, right when she's getting ready to, to go over and see Jessica and tell her no, her phone rings, and she answers the phone. It's... And it is her mother calling. And her mom's like, how's it going? Have you, you know, how is our things going with Rush Week? And Shauna's like, um, yeah, about that. Well, her mom just doesn't really give her a chance to say anything or get a word in edgewise. Her mom, Sandra, is just so excited about the possibility, you know, of Shauna being a Lama, a Lama Chaw, excuse me, a Lama Chaw, that she just kind of doesn't really give Shauna that much, you know, time to get a word in edgewise. Well, Shauna, she was going to tell her mom what was going on, but she decides to keep it to herself. And after this conversation with her mother, she decides that if she tells Jessica no, that her mother will be severely disappointed in her, and she does not want to disappoint her mother. So she tells Jessica, yes, she will steal the horse figurine. So Jessica, you know, says, wonderful. You know, you are in. We are sisters for life. You will not regret this. This is the best decision you've ever made of your life. No one will ever know you have done this. Um, you know, and everything will be fine. So they plan this for the very next day. So, um, you know, Shauna's standing outside the jewelry store and she's really, really nervous and upset about this. You know, her, her stomach is doing somersaults, and she is sweating, and she's so nervous because, you know, she's never done anything like this in her life. She's never even thought about shoplifting ever in her life. Well, you know, she sees the other shorty sister. You know, they're supposed to pretend like they don't know each other. So she sees the other girl come in, the jewelry store. And her cue is to count to 10 and then come into the jewelry store. So she counts to 10 and she walks in the jewelry store. And the other girl um, has got the employee uh, looking the other way. You know, she's got her attention. And Shauna walks over to the display where the horse figurine is. And she picks up the horse figurine. And she slips it into her purse. But what poor Shauna does not know is the whole thing is a setup. You know, the whole thing is Shauna was meant to get caught. And the minute that Shauna slips the horse figurine into her purse, she is surrounded by employees and a police officer at the jewelry store. And she is put in handcuffs, and she is put in the back of a patrol car and taken to the Twin Brook Police Department. See, what Shauna doesn't know is 
that Jessica's mother also went to the university at the same time that Sandra was there. And Jessica's mother knew Sandra. And Jessica's mother was actually dating Shauna's father, Richard Kramer, at the time. Well, um, as soon as Jessica's... Uh, well, Jessica's mother was dating Richard Kramer. Well, as soon as Richard met Sandra, he knew that Sandra was very, very special, and he fell madly in love with her, and so he broke up with Jessica's mother, um, who was in the sorority with Sandra, and Jessica's mother never forgot this. You know, it broke her heart, and she vowed to get revenge on Sandra, but during their college days, you know, she was never able to because everyone loved Sandra, and no one... Uh, you know, was willing to do anything to hurt her at this time. Well, when Jessica's mother found out that um, Sandra's daughter was going to be going to the college, you know, and rushing the same sorority, she really talked to her daughter and told her daughter that um, Shauna's mother was her arch enemy, and she basically put Jessica up to this. So the whole thing was a plan. Uh, the jewelry store was tipped off in advance that Shauna would be coming there trying to steal that little crystal horse figurine. So she was caught and she did get arrested. Um, now, Shauna is the kind of girl that, you know, at the time she did not know she was set up. She did not find out she was set up until much later. But, you know, she was not going to, you know, tell the police that, someone asked her to do this she just apologized to the police and said she was very sorry and that she would never do it again you know um look at jordan she's got some kind of illness she needs to get her butt to the doctor <laughs> uh let's see if we can um i don't know can we do anything for her i don't think we can but so anyway um what happened was, Shauna ended up, her parents got her a very good attorney. She did tell her mom, you know, what had happened, that, you know, she was, she finally confessed to her mom. Her mom had to pull it out of her, because at this point, she still did not know that she'd been set up. But, uh, she finally confessed to her mom that the reason that she did it was to help out a sorority sister. And the minute that her mom heard Jessica's name, she knew what had gone on. She knew that poor Shauna had been set up. Well, um, she did have a very good attorney. They hired her a very good attorney. And she was able to get off uh, without going to jail. She did not have to spend any time in jail. Uh, she had to do community service and things like that. Um, but, you know, she feels very, very embarrassed about the whole thing. Embarrassed that she could have let someone talk her into doing something like that. Um, you know, she's like, I never should have done it to begin with. And Jordan's like, Shauna, I completely understand. I know that you are a good person. Did I not tell you to go hack that computer? Are you all having as much problems with your sins as I'm having with mine? It seems like lately... Um, Let's not do that. Let's let's work on. Let's do something else. Let's do. Um, let's make a. Uh, let's make a video game. Okay. Now will you go do it? Okay. Lately, my Sims do not want to do what I tell them to do. Uh, anyway, Jordan is telling Shauna that she knows that Shauna is a good person, and she's telling her, "Do not worry. Uh, I'm going to help you." I have been doing a little research on my own, um, researching Erica and digging into her past. And if there's something in her past that she does not want found, I will find it. I'm not going to let her do this to you. I'm not going to let her treat you this way. Um, and Shauna's just so very happy to hear this. You know, she does not want Jordan to do anything that will get her in trouble. Um... <laughs> but, you know, at the same time, she is so very, very thankful to Jordan 
for, you know, looking up things about Erica to try to find out what's going on with Erica. Now, poor Jordan is sick, obviously. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hop on over into the Reynolds household. And we are going to um, try to get Miss Jordan some help. <laughs> I don't know if she can go to the hospital. I don't think that she can. Uh, but she might be able to be treated by um, Ethan, possibly. I don't know. We will just see. And it looks like Ethan is somewhere nearby. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if Ethan was getting ready to visit Shauna. Which most likely he probably was. Let's just see where Ethan is. There's Ethan. And it looks like Ethan does want to go and visit Shauna. I mean, he's just kind of lurking outside her rental property house. So, um, he's going to come over. Where did Jordan go? Jordan magically got on the computer, even though Richard was on the computer when we were last here. Jordan somehow just magically morphed into his seat. I don't know. Um... <laughs> But Ethan is going to come over um, and give Shauna a kiss. He just, you know, he cannot stand being away from her. He's going to give her an embrace. Now, let's just see what we can do. Um, can she order medicine? And I don't see anything that says anything about ordering medicine. I don't know. Um, let's see. Okay. So, let's see. Basically, we are sick. And where's Ethan? Here comes Ethan. Can we ask Ethan? Um, to help us? You know, he is a doctor. Let's see. Let's see if we can. Um... Give, we can treat her, but not that kind of treat. We can give medical advice. So basically, I guess we cannot treat her medically. Um, he's going to come and give her some medical advice because Shauna said, Jordan is not looking well at all. She looks like she's sick. Um, so maybe you should talk to her and see if you can help her. And Jordan just became good friends with Ethan. Well, that is good. Okay, treat sickness symptoms with rest. Napping from... Okay. Alright. So, um... I guess probably it would be a good idea for Jordan to go on home. So that's what Jordan's going to do. Jordan is going to go on home because she is feeling quite sick. Now, Jordan has told Shauna that she will not tell Ethan what Shauna's secret is. You know, she told Shauna, you know, I know Ethan is not going to care anything about this. He's not going to give two hoots about the fact that you were tricked into, you know, doing this when you were in college. It's not going to matter to him. Um, so, you know, but... I will let you tell him in your own time. There's no way that I will tell him what's going on, you know. Just tell him when you're ready. But please don't worry about it because I know he's going to love you anyway and it's not going to matter to him. So, Ethan is going to come over and he is going to give his sweetheart a kiss. You know, he just hates being away from her. And he's like, Shauna, please, um, come with me. Let me take you out on the town. And let's just see um, if they are hungry. They're not hungry or anything. But he's like, let me take you out. <laughs> we can go out and spend some quality time together. Um, just us, you know, and just talk. And so she's like, okay, um, you know, yeah, I'll go with you. Now, he can tell that something is bothering her, but he does not know what it is that's bothering her. They're going to go over to the Crystal Nightclub for a little while um, and get a drink. 
and just spend some quiet time de-stressing. You know, he can tell he's not going to push her. You know, he doesn't want her, her to feel like he's being pushy and, and trying to get her to tell him something. You know, but he's kind of wondering. Um, so I wonder what build mode items are missing. I have a good idea what they are. Nope, I don't know what they are. Not going to worry about it. Um, but he can tell that something is not quite right with Shauna. He can tell that she's upset about something. And he's thinking, you know, maybe it is just pre-wedding jitters. You know, he's hoping that's all that it is. And he's at, he asked her, he says, Shauna, do you love me? And she says, Ethan, I love you with all my heart. I will always love you. And he said, do you still want to be my wife? And she looks him in the eyes and she says, Ethan, I want to be your wife more than anything else in the entire world. And Ethan says, well, as long as that's the case, you know, that's all that matters to me because I love you. <laughs> so let's see if he can order drinks for her. This never works for me. He's going to order Cupid Juice. You know, I don't know if he'll order one for her or not. I've tried this countless times before, and it has never worked. So, we will see whether it will work or not. I don't know. Um, you know, he may not even go in there to order a drink. It looks to me like they're just going to stand out on the sidewalk, you know, for hours and hours and hours. Because that's how it goes in The Sims 4. <laughs> I mean, you know, you tell The Sims to do something. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Now let's just see. 90% chance he's gonna come in and order a drink for himself, and that's it. What do you wanna bet? And he might not even get the drink. I don't know. And Mr. Bartender, who's wearing gloves, is just kind of showing off. And it looks like Shauna is going to stay out here on the sidewalk. And she's just going to stand here and look around. Because <laughs> that's what they do in The Sims 4. And look who just walked by. <laughs> yep. Laura Donahue, I'm pretty sure is who that is. Who dated Ethan briefly. Yep, that's who she is. And what is Ethan doing? Ethan's drinking his drink, isn't he? Of course he is. And did he order anything for Shauna? Of course he did not. Of course not, because, you know, that would make way too much sense. Um, and he cannot even call her over or any kind of anything like that. So he's going to have to come back outside in the club. And he's going to have to speak with her. Um... And then, once he does that, hold on, I've got to, hold on, I'll be right back. Sorry about that, had to take care of something. So, he is going to um, embrace her, and then perhaps they can go into the club together. And she's thinking about babies. Did you see that bassinet? Oh, um, <laughs> one thing, I do not think that there's any way that she's pregnant, but I actually do have the Woohoo module of MC Command Center installed. And I do actually have the Risky Woohoo turned on. But it is set for a very, very, very low possibility of getting pregnant with Risky Woohoo. But just letting you know that it is a possibility. But I really don't think she's pregnant. Um, because we played her and... Um, I didn't see her having any any symptoms, no sickness, nothing like that. Uh, but they are going to sit and talk together for a little bit. You know, too bad that he could not order her a drink. Let's see if he can possibly now. I bet you now I won't even get the option to order for the group. What do you think? Yeah, order drinks for group. I have never, ever, ever, ever. He's going to order a boiler room. And let's just say, if it ever works, I've never once had this work, ever, ever, ever. Uh, does it work for you? If it does, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what it is I'm doing wrong and why I can never order drinks for the group. Even though, um, you know, it says you can, it never works. And is that Car- no, okay. I thought that was Carmen because I saw, uh, 
she was walking like she was angry, and Carmen is always angry, so I thought that was Carmen. But it's not. Um, it is Keith Huddleston's sister, Candace, and it looks like Ariana Cortland is here, and um, Sabrina Whitmore, and Zach Cortland, and Darren Schultz. And I'm going to have to get that mod that disables these animal hats. I thought I had it in, but evidently I do not. Okay, so Ethan and Shauna are just talking. And Shauna really wants to tell him what is going on. But how do you tell someone that their mother is blackmailing you to stay away from them? You know, when Ethan finally finds out what his mother is up to, it's going to crush him. You know, um... Who wants to find out that their mother is evil, you know? But in all honesty, Ethan probably kind of, sort of, has a feeling that his mother is not the most stand-up person in the world. Okay, let's just check and see if he actually orders drinks for Shauna. And let's just see. And dude is wearing gloves. Never seen a bartender wearing gloves before, but you know, hey. You know, who am I to judge? And is he even making anything? You know, we're waiting for that drink, dude. Let's get a move on. <laughs> okay, and how many drinks did we get? And it looks like we got one drink. And we are drinking our drink. What about Shauna? You gonna take Shauna a drink? Oh, hey, maybe that's Shauna's drink. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> that is the very, very first time that this has ever, ever worked in any of my games. And I have tried that interaction so many times I have lost count. This is the very, very first time it has ever worked. And with that said, I do need to let you know that it is time for me to say goodbye. But I hope you all have enjoyed this episode. Please let me know what you think about everything in the comments down below. What do you think Ethan's going to say when Shauna tells him that she was arrested for shoplifting? Do you think he will even care? And what do you think Ethan is going to do to his mother when he finds out what she's been up to? And should Shauna go ahead and tell him everything now? Or should she wait and try to get some information that she can use to counter blackmail Erica? Let me know what you think. And if you did enjoy this video, please leave me a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'll see you all next time.